Uh, thank, thank you uh, very much for coming and thank you for having me. Um, I wanted to talk today uh, briefly about, um, actually also about process in a funny way, of um, the, the opportunity that came to us in 2007 to uh, make what I look, look at now as a completely new opportunity to, to make a new sort of organisation for commissioning not, not just art and architecture but now moving into the performing arts and to bring them to a place which they, they would never otherwise go and to bring many many people from all walks of life and of all ages to, to experience that thing. Um, so I should just start by um, situating what we're doing in, in South London which put together this map where you can see the Camberwell School of Art and the South London Gallery and the Peckham Library and uh, this large complex in the middle which is known as the Copeland Road Industrial Estate which for a number of years has been um, growing as a, um, for want of a better word, a hub of uh, activity across the arts. And this large um, site here which is marked in green is the um, what's known as the Peckham multi-storey car park on Ceres Road. Um, the one year I, I, I was pestering the council a lot since the moment I started working in Peckham in 2006 for um, ideas about spaces which you know could be used for this that or the other and one one day I the head of property for Southwark Council at the time said you know I've I've got this space that I thought might be of interest to you, um, although I think it might be too big for, you know, because we'd done one of these sculpture projects in, in the, in the uh, autumn of 2007, so I said I'd go and have a look, and it turned out that the top four stories of this multi-story car park were completely unused and locked off, and the top, the top floor had the most um, extraordinary view over, the, over um, London, looking from one side Millennium Dome right through to um, the other end. Sorry, I've lost my train of thought there. Um, and that was the uh, car park, the, the picture that we took when we first went up to the car park and really did feel that it was, um, I mean, it was a wonderful space. It's 170 metres long and about 40 metres wide. So um, all the artists that I then took up there said, you know, it's far too big, we can't possibly you know, make works for this site. And I said, well, you know, we should just make the decision that we're going to commission works that are grand enough to take this site on. So that's where we began the second year of um, Bold Tendencies, which is the name of the project. Um, we started commissioning uh, works of art for the roof of this car park. Um, the second year, I began to think we had about um, 300 visitors in the second year over the whole summer, and I said, one of the reasons people don't want to come here is because it's very, very hostile as a place to go. And we thought to ourselves, what could we possibly put up there that would make people feel more as if they wanted to come and see these incredible works of art that we were giving opportunities to younger artists to put works up there. Anyhow, in the, in the um, third year of Bold Tendencies, I thought what we need to do is make a place where people can have a drink and have something to eat or sit down and then you know if they sit down then maybe they'll go and look at the works again because in the end I th always felt that the transformative experience of art was to do with being able to return to something over and over and over again and always find something new and discover something else about it so I, I rang up a friend of mine who was still studying architecture um, Lettuce Drake and Paloma Gormley who since set up their practice architecture firm and said, you know, do you feel like designing a cafe for the roof of the car park? And they said, yes, we would like to do that. And so um, in the third year of Bold Tendencies, this was the situation um, on the first evening that we were open. And this continued um, for the three months that we 
had the project up there. In the third year, we also decided that we needed to, though the project was very informal and, and a wonderful thing because of that informality, we thought we need to um, separate it legally from the gallery that we were running around the corner. So we turned Bold Tendencies into a uh, non-profit organization, which meant that we were able to um, attract uh, better sources of funding, and also we were able to work with wonderful international artists who who were, you know, represented by other galleries and dealing with other people, but, but Bold Tendencies was transforming itself into a completely new sort of organization of its own accord, which was a very exciting thing. So we worked with artists like Anthea Hamilton, whose work you may know, she's just, she was commissioned last year to make one of the big Olympics posters for this year and has made great, great, great works of art. And this was one of the largest works that she made to date. Then we also work with the uh, Romanian artist Mircea Cantor, and we put this 12 meter long neon piece hanging off the side of the building, which lit up at night. It was a great, great work of art, in my view. Anyhow, um, this is the, uh, the Frank's Cafe, which was the um, building we put up there in the third year, and then we continued. What I started thinking about then was, you know, how do we, you know, this building is what it is, and all we can do if we want to have any longevity attached to this project is plug in or bolt on everything we need to do what we want to do. So the next thing that we built, which was um, actually last year, was this incredible uh, auditorium um, on the lower levels, which is a circular building made entirely of straw. And because we then had this enclosed space that was terrific for dance and theater and music, we were able to begin a whole new raft of commissioning process to bring in the performing arts to the roof. And for example, we commissioned um, a new production of um, the great Stravinsky, Right of Spring, and we gave away tickets to every single event. And that particular event, we gave away 400 tickets and 1,400 people turned up. So um, I hope I'm not boring on about, you know, how to organize things. But um, for me, this has been, you know, the lifeline alongside running a gallery with all its um, associated pressures. The idea that there was this opportunity to do something that almost couldn't be done because of the hostility of the site, the fact that we had no money and um, you know, it was there, the whole thing was sort of there for the making and the taking at the same time. So we, we, um, we are now going towards Bold Tendency 6, which I hope um, you'll all come to if you can. It's opening on the 30th of June. And um, a whole, we, we've managed to increase the budget available to artists. We're going to commission six great, great, great artists and um, monumental work, I mean, really, mo truly monumental works for the first time. In, in, in our view, and we're also building uh, on the opposite side to where Frank's Cafe is, we're going to build um, a library and a reading room which will look out from the, from the roof onto the sculpture project and beyond that. And um, next thing I suppose to think about is the longevity of that project in general, given all the issues that now, you know, one comes into to do with development and whether the building needs to be pulled down or you know whether there is a future for it and I think all we want to do at this moment in time is make the best possible project we can this year and then the other important thing I've been learning because I always tried to I think control everything we were doing and to always have a five-year plan and a ten-year plan and in the end if this year happens to be the final year of Bold Tendencies, which I don't know if it will be, um, one has to think it's not really the final year. What, what is the next incarnation of this thing? And that's always been the case with it. And that's what, for me, has been so exciting and challenging and rewarding. Thank you. Thank you.